A human leg is pretty generic, but a prosthetic leg has endless possibilities because you can mix and match all sorts of components. But what type should you get? Today, I'll give you an overview of the main types of sockets, then compare their pros and cons. Plus, I'll share a useful pro tip at the end. If you've seen this video, then you know that the way a prosthetic leg is held onto a human leg is called a suspension system. The most common types of modern suspension systems utilize a liner and a socket. The thing that differentiates them is how the liner attaches to the rest of the prosthesis. Broadly speaking, the two main approaches are to pin your leg on or to suck it on. When it comes to sucking on prosthetic legs, We'll subdivide this category into suction and vacuum. If you submerge a cup, then push the air out and try to pull the cup out of the water, it resists. The way the cup holds onto the water is basically the same way a suction socket holds onto an amputated leg. There's more than one way to achieve this negative pressure. When I say a vacuum leg, I'm referring to a socket with a literal vacuum inside it, whereas suction legs push out the air without an electric vacuum. For either approach to work, it needs to be a closed system. My vacuum leg had an outer sleeve covering the opening where the socket meets the liner. Suction legs may or may not utilize an outer sleeve. A ring that goes inside the socket serves the same basic function of closing off gaps, so the suction can do its magic. And a special thanks to Carrie at Elective Amputation for letting me use her footage since I've never used a suction leg. The difference between suction and vacuum is intensity. Having a literal vacuum in the mix doesn't change the game as much as it makes the pros and cons more extreme. Keep that in mind in a minute when we discuss those pros and cons. But first, let's dive into the pins! Actually, that sounds painful. Pins are the other common way to keep your leg on. They can be attached to a liner or you can have a pin surgically implanted on the end of your leg which is called osseointegration. I don't have any first-hand experience with that, or should I say first foot, unless you have a need that warrants osseointegration, such as having an above-knee amputation that's too short for a traditional liner, I'm guessing your doctor won't suggest it. The more common way to pin on a prosthetic leg is with a pinlock liner. This pin fits into a hole at the bottom of the socket. See that little piece of metal? The ridges on the pin clip past that piece. Then when you want to take off the leg, pushing the button moves the stopper out of the way so the pin can slide out. <laughs> the liner feels similar to a mouse pad. It has fabric on the outside and a firm gel-like material on the inside. It's grippy, kind of like if you were to put jello on a plate. That grippiness helps the liner cling to your skin, holding everything on. Just like with suction and vacuum, the pin lock liner is tight enough that it's not going to slide off. Between the close fit and the traction, the easiest way for me to put on the liner is to turn it inside out, place it at the base of my residual limb, then roll the liner up. Instead of putting my leg in the liner, I put my liner on my leg if that makes sense. Now that we have a basic understanding, let's compare and contrast some pros and cons. Which type of leg is easier to get on? I haven't tried every model out there, so keep that in mind. But the vacuum liner I personally wore was very stiff and so difficult to pull on that I would lubricate the outside with water so it'd slide on better. I also used a thin nylon sock to make it easier to slide the liner into the socket. I'm not sure if these annoyances were unique to my setup or whether they're common with vacuum legs. On the flip side, pinlock can be a little finicky when you're first getting used to it. It sounds simple to stick the pin in the hole, but if the pin isn't at the right angle when you put on the liner, then you're never going to hit that target. When I was a new amputee, it often took me multiple attempts to get the pin in the hole. Now that I have more experience, it's super fast. But still, if you aren't careful about keeping socks away from the pin, then fabric can get pulled into the hole, in which case you won't be able to get your leg off until your prosthetist comes and saves you. These are issues you simply don't have to worry about with suction or vacuum suspension. What about function? Well, it's a mixed bag. With pinlock, you can bend your knee better because there are fewer layers. 
If you do activities like biking, where knee bending is important, then this is a big deal. Similarly, if you do a lot of kneeling, such as in a garden or a workshop, and you happen to knee on something that puts a hole in the outer sleeve of a suction or vacuum leg, then you'll get a leak. Holes can also develop with wear and tear. This is a definite con to vacuum and suction, but at the same time, if you're not in an environment that's likely to cause problems, maybe it's not as much of a consideration. I hear tell that vacuum legs can have a stronger hold than pinlock legs, which sounds plausible to me based on my experience. But unless you're doing something crazy like kicking things with your prosthesis, I'm not sure that extra strength makes a significant difference to the average amputee. Vacuum and suction legs may offer a stronger hold, but the components that make them stronger come with the downside of added weight. A few extra ounces for a vacuum may not seem like a big deal, but keep in mind this weight is at the end of your extremity. The farther a weight is from your core, the harder it is to move. And in this case, you're trying to move that extra weight with muscles that have not only atrophied, but have also been cut in half. I wouldn't say the weight from a vacuum is a deal killer, but it's worth considering, especially if the foot you've chosen is on the heavy side, since too much weight can affect how you walk. Moving on, let's discuss volume fluctuation. Amputated legs change sizes over time, especially for new amputees. It takes time for the post-surgical swelling to go away. Meanwhile, the muscles of your residual limb are also atrophying. Unless you gain weight, the diameter of your leg will probably decrease over the course of your life, though the rate of change tends to slow down after the first couple years. Not only does limb size change in the long term, but it also fluctuates during the course of the day. The longer you are in the liner, the more it squeezes out fluid, effectively shrinking your leg. It's the inverse of swelling. The size of my leg fluctuates throughout the day, and since walking in a loose socket is difficult and painful, socks are used to make up for lost volume. With a pinlock leg, I simply unclip, pull on a sock or two, and stick my leg back in. For vacuum seal, I have to take off the outer sleeve before I can add a sock. The same goes for suction legs. It's a little more of a hassle, but not enough of an annoyance to affect which type of socket I personally would choose. Something that is a bigger deal is how volume fluctuation affects the seal. Think about it. A vacuum system requires a seal, so you want a close fit. If your leg shrinks a lot, you have extra space. The amount my leg fluctuated during the course of a day wasn't a big deal, but large changes are potentially problematic. This is why my first leg wasn't suction or vacuum, because my prosthetist knew my leg would shrink rapidly in the first few months. He felt a pinlock would be more accommodating. That said, not all prosthetists take the same approach. That's just what mine did. But what about comfort? If you've seen my video about my first steps as an amputee, you'll remember that it was a bit painful. I think that had less to do with the type of suspension I was using and more to do with walking on a freshly severed bone. Go figure. If your first steps aren't comfortable, I wouldn't necessarily say it's a sign that you're using the wrong type of suspension. It might just mean that your leg is still healing. Now that I'm fully healed up, which do I find more comfortable? I haven't tried suction, but my vacuum seal leg was definitely less comfortable. The liner itself was tighter and thicker and made from a different material. I had issues with it rubbing on my kneecap, basically causing a friction burn. A piece of fabric called a glider helped, but overall it was definitely less comfortable having so many thick layers. But like I said before, my experience is limited to a handful of legs, so there may be other comfortable options out there. Plus, what's uncomfortable to one person might not be uncomfortable to another. I'm a CRPS amputee. I'll link a playlist if you don't know what CRPS is. Point B, given my medical history, my leg might be extra sensitive as opposed to someone with severe neuropathy who lost their leg due to diabetes. I'm not convinced it's possible to be perfectly comfortable in a prosthesis. I mean, you're walking on a severed bone in a hard carbon fiber socket instead of on a healthy foot in a memory foam sneaker. But for me in my situation, pinlock liners have been comfortable enough. Something else that affects comfort is pistoning. Pistoning is when your residual limb moves up and down relative to the socket. Ow. With vacuum or suction, your prosthesis is sucked on, 
so your residual limb is unlikely to move within the socket. Without pistoning, everything feels more cohesive, kind of like a real leg. By contrast, my pinlock leg doesn't feel like it's part of me, because when I move, there's a slight delay before the socket catches up. It's hard to describe, but I can see why some amputees prefer the feel of suction or vacuum. I think the pistoning could potentially hurt in an old school leg, but with a modern gel liner padding my limb, the slight pistoning I've experienced hasn't been painful. Price-wise, the more components you add to your prosthesis, the more it usually costs. So it's no surprise that adding a vacuum ups the price tag. That said, the way American Health Insurance is set up, if I've met my out-of-pocket maximum, then the price differences aren't always noticeable. And given how expensive any prosthesis is, or amputation itself, your deductible might already be met by the time you get your first leg. Any prosthesis has the potential for problems. We've already covered how you can get stuck in a pinlock leg if you aren't careful about socks, or how it can take practice to get the pin in the hole. Vacuum and suction face different problems, such as if there's a power outage or you're out camping and you can't charge your leg. Or maybe you just forgot and it ran out battery. My vacuum leg wouldn't just fall off if the battery stopped working. That outer sleeve kept things on long enough for me to sit down and do a little troubleshooting. But it's still annoying if you forget to charge your leg, which is kind of a weird thing to say when you stop and think about it. Suction suspension doesn't have a battery, but if something got into that valve, it could cause a similar problem. The bigger issue is that I got sores with vacuum. I'm not saying this will happen to everyone, but it happened to me. Remember how I said that even though vacuum and suction have very similar pros and cons, the intensity is higher with vacuum. I'm guessing I wouldn't have gotten such bad sores with a suction leg, but on the upside, vacuums do have a stronger hold. Like I said, both the pros and the cons are dialed up for vacuum versus suction. If something goes wrong with a vacuum socket and you have that strong vacuum pulling at your limb, you can get blisters and other types of sores. I also developed a bursa in my leg. Picture inflammation and pain surrounding that fluid-filled sac inside the stump. I don't know whether or not that bursa was caused by my socket, but either way, it didn't mesh well with the vacuum. Another random problem with the vacuum is that it can be slightly noisy. So if you're sitting somewhere quietly, funeral and your vacuum randomly turns on, it can be a little disrupting. So which type of suspension should you get? I know it's annoying when people won't just tell you what option is best, but the fact is that every amputee situation is so individual that I don't think there is one right answer. What works for one amputee may not be a good fit for another. I'm also not qualified to give out medical advice. I haven't been to med school, and I haven't tried every prosthesis out there. Your prosthetist is the person best suited to help you decide. You got a shirt. <laughs> but in the meantime, I'll tell you what I ultimately chose and why. I stopped using vacuum suspension because of the bursa, but even if that hadn't been in the mix, I think I'm more of a pinlock girl because I bike a lot. Now for that pro tip I promised you. I wanted my first leg to be a good experience, so I was more risk adverse. My prosthetist had experience and I didn't, so I let him decide what type of leg I should get first. He chose pinlock for my first leg. My second socket is when I experimented with vacuum seal. The timing of my experiment was strategic. Your first few sockets don't last as long because your leg is shrinking quickly. Before you know it, the socket doesn't fit and needs to be replaced. I chose to experiment with my second socket because that way, if I didn't like the suspension, I'd only have to use it for a few months instead of a few years before insurance would cover a new one. Since new amputees often go through sockets faster, I wanted to take advantage of that phase to explore my likes and dislikes. Looking back, I think I tried vacuum too early. I wonder if I was still having more dramatic volume fluctuations, which led to fit issues, which in turn led to the bursa. I wish I'd tried suction instead, because it probably would have been gentler. And if I'd liked it, I could have tried vacuum suspension next after my legs stopped fluctuating as much. That said, I do still like the concept of experimenting early on. Just be careful. Quick clarification. When my legs shrunk, insurance only covered a new socket, 
It didn't cover an entirely new lake, complete with a new foot every time I outgrew my lake. Or should I say undergrew? Anyhow, I kept the same foot, but it was put on the new socket. That makes my relationship with my foot a longer term relationship than the one with my socket. So wouldn't it be nice to pick a foot you actually like? Lucky for you, I made a video about that too. You're welcome. I hope today's video was helpful. I've got plenty more if you want them. Huh? I'm Stephanina, and thank you for joining me on my amputee adventures.